After extremely successful launch of the KRC token standard on Caspa, Caspa is currently rallying up 4.6%, currently sitting at 17.2% or 17.2 cents on coin market cap, ranked number 21 in this video. We're going to share some big news. An exchange listing for Caspa is going live today, and I'm going to share with you exactly what exchange that is, why it's so important. Also, we're going to take a look at some price action. We're going to take a look at a post-mortem of exactly what happened with the KRC token launch. Was it successful? Was it not? What were some of the issues? And what does the community think? And we're also going to take a look at the real-time transactions now that the euphoria has kind of slid off a little bit. What are the transactions looking like? And what are the active wallets looking like? Let's first start with the big milestone. So this is from Caspa Facts on X. Caspa has processed more than 3.4 million transactions in the first five hours since the KRC20 launch. No other proof of work has ever done this before. I want to go to this one next. This is from official Travlad on X as well. In the last 24 hours, now to be fair, this was around 12 hours ago, 13.3 uh, million Caspa KRC transactions Compared to Ethereum at 1.1 million and Solana at 3 million. You're going to watch Casper keep climbing the rankings. When will you decide to research? You know, when we decided to do research, it really changed our lives. Uh, and then we take a look at, at something outside of just a transaction. Let's talk about every proof of work coin. Uh, which ones have ever had the success of Casper? Well, none of them have. You can see here from I'm Hover. Proof of work record. Caspa set a new record for proof of work, processing the highest number of transactions in just one hour, hitting 700,000 transactions. Everyone always agrees, well, most people agree, that proof of work is more secure, it's more decentralized than something like proof of stake. The problem is it's not as scalable, right? We talk about the trilemma. Well, here you have a proof of work token that is not only secure, decentralized, but has proven that it could be scalable. And we haven't even went through the crescendo hard fork that'll take Casper from one block per second to 10 blocks per second. I do want to share this post here from Shai, one of the co-authors of the Ghost Stack Protocol. Um, so important stuff in here. So I wanted to write a recap of the KRC20 launch and its consequences. Uh, he wants to stress that only found out about the bug in the Casware wallet. We'll get into that a little bit more later. I was very saddened to find out that some community members lost funds due to a completely avoidable third-party bug, tarnishing what otherwise would have been an unequivocal day of celebration for our community. Since hearing of the bug, uh, I've spent most of my efforts trying to understand what happened and what can be done. I'll get back to this below. I wanted to share my interpretation of the last 24 hours layer by layer. Talking about the consensus layer, Casper Layer 1 was given a legendary stress test, possibly the largest in proof-of-work history. In just eight hours, the network processed more organic transactions than ETH can handle in an entire week. And this is ETH running on a consensus mechanism that is technically more scalable or should be more scalable than proof of work. All throughout, we monitored nodes and found that the Rusty Caspa client can handle these huge loads on cheap hardware without breaking a sweat. For the Rusty crew and everyone focused on L1, this was an abject success. Uh, talking about the peer-to-peer -peer layer, talked about the mempool getting to 50,000 transactions in queue, the highest day ever he ever saw tested, and the nodes were able to sync from scratch in less than one hour. Another massive feat. Talks about the real estate as a star of the show, uh, the mempool, the modular uh, refactoring of the mempool withstood queues in the six digits without flinching. I remind you again that we have nodes running on century old laptops and on Raspberry Pis. I know some of you watching, uh, you definitely are some of these people. We've already done bigger stress loads on the testnet 11, so we weren't terribly surprised. But seeing the rusty nodes working like clockwork under an excessive strain caused by more than 50 coins deployed on the same day provided very strong affirmations to just how much of a wonder Rusty, Ca rusty Caspa is. The bottom line is that even of the light, even uh, in the light of the extremely chaotic usage oscillations, not a single node had to be restarted. The conclusion is that the entire layer one proved God tier performance and resilience. Man, I love Shy. This is where things unfortunately go a bit sour, talking about the ecosystem. After a few hours, it became apparent that one of the third party wallets 
Cassware had incorrectly implemented their RBF policy. I am not sure on the details, but it seems that their logic for some reason mixed the minting and the change UTXOs, causing the change to go to the miner. So in some situations, a person with a single UTXO of X Caspa who wanted to pay a fee of Y instead found that they actually paid X minus Y. This could be terribly painful. Say if X is in the tens of thousands while Y is like three. So they mixed up. Oh man, how this even happened? Due to the Casper wallet being closed source and their devs in compliance and properly informing their community, some of the devs had to issue a statement guiding users to stop using Casper. And here is that statement that Shy is talking about. Stop using Casper wallet. Stop mint. Stop transfer. Stop RBS. Stop adding transaction fees. Talking about write down your seed phrase and your pass phrase. Now, the wallet did come out with another uh, post saying, hey, it's uh, feel free to go back and start using the wallet again. I would still proceed with caution. As Shai mentioned, this is a closed source. Uh, he, he said the devs were incompliant with requests and properly informing the community. And so I wouldn't even touch that wallet until if somehow they regain our trust. But as of right now, I would still... Stay away from it. There are lessons for everyone here. I learned in hindsight that I should have insisted that Casplex also provide their own open source wallet. Uh, Casplex's motivation for not developing a wallet was to leave room for more community development, which sounded very reasonable to me at the time. This is great, but you want to have it be open source. So you have people like Shy uh, who can go in there and see, are there any bugs? Are there any issues that we can fix before people start using it and potentially lose their money? Could maybe I've been more active in warning users, he says. Says he's not familiar with the Casware team and never had any contact with them, but he says he hoped they learned a harsh lesson. He goes on to say, I'm currently trying to obtain data analysis showing the extent of user funds affected by the bug and checking what can be done to help users who lost funds. Uh, then he goes on to talk about the exchanges, which we'll talk about the new listing of the exchange. Let's actually talk about it right now. We finally have a U.S. regulated exchange that will be listing Caspa today. This is extremely exciting. The name of that exchange is Pionex, available in 47 states in the United States. We know Uphold is available. It is technically not a regulated exchange. And so Pionex is the first coming in with super low fees. And they're doing a massive giveaway for the Caspa community. As you can see here, uh, it is now available on Pionex, uh, Caspa is, and they're doing a 100,000 Caspa token prize pool. And the only, uh, only way to enter, or the one way to enter, is to buy or deposit 350 Caspa tokens. Now, this is very important. Let me tell you why it's important. We always talk about who is going to be the next to, to uh, list Caspa. Is it Coinbase? Is it Binance? When we have exchanges like Pionex, maybe in the future like Kraken, if we can go out and support, whether it's trading some Caspa on there, buying some Caspa. I know I'll be buying Caspa using the Pionex platform. What does this do? This shows to the exchanges, hey, we listed Caspa and our volume absolutely spiked. We brought in X amount of fees and the other exchanges are going to look around just like they do in Wall Street and say, well, we want a piece of that pie. So I think it's extremely important when exchanges go out of the way to list the Caspa token because they're not getting paid to do so. So they're doing it on their own accord. It's important that we uh, that we help them and we, uh, we sign up. So I already have my link registered. There's going to be a link in the description of this video. Use that link, register for Pionex. But once you're in, I do want to show you because I've already created my account. You can go in here and you can see all the different markets they have available. Of course, they have Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. And soon you're going to see that beautiful Green backwards K here, listing Caspa. They have some of the lowest fees, 0.1% trading fees. They have trading bots on here as well. You can deposit crypto. You can deposit from your debit card, your, uh, your ACH, and wire transfer. And again, it is a regulated exchange in the United States. So big shout out to the Pionex team for going out on a limb and listing Caspa. You will not uh, be sorry. And then um, I do want to share this as well. Uh, this was from Way Too Fast for you. Uh, talked about been stuck at 85% for over an hour on the Casware wallet. We did see the Cas uh, the Casware team talking about, hey, fill out this form. If you got transaction fees of more than 50 Caspa, uh, we'll look to refund. I know some people were starting to get some of their Caspa back. But still, my recommendation to you watching is even if they say everything is good, I would still wait. Don't waste or lose your precious Caspa tokens. Let's take a look. 
at where Caspa is currently on TPS. Now that that euphoria stage has kind of withered down a little bit, you can see current uh, real-time TPS is around 30.5 transactions per second. Real-time blocks per second is coming in right at one as it dips a little bit below one. But I want you to take a look at this. The active addresses, of course, something we expected and we talked about on our live show, which you should come check out Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, was just a massive spike in not only active addresses, going from 19,000 on September 13th to a peak currently of 90,000. 475 active addresses. Take a look at the transaction count. This went completely vertical as well. Same date, September 13th, 115,600 transactions to a high of over 9 million transactions. And the network ran beautifully, as Donald Trump would say. Uh, and then you can see here the live blocks, all the different transactions. So KRC is up and running. Uh, what are going to be some of the badass DEXs and DAPs that are going to be built? We're going to keep you up to date on all of that. But the last thing I want to show you is a price action chart on Caspan. Why we could potentially be forming a very bullish pattern on the daily as what I'm seeing here is a potential shoulder head. And depending on how this price action goes, we could be breaking out of this other shoulder here which if that move went, we could expect to see Caspa's price, if we measure the breakout, to reach uh, about 19.9 cents. We take a look on the bottom here at our liquidity flow index, which measures money flowing in, money flowing out, and the gray line is going to be your sentiment. So how are people across social media, across all the platforms that gauge sentiment from a trader, how are they reacting? And the sentiment is still positive, although it's trending a little bit down. But these are things you're going to keep an eye on as far as price action. But at the end of the day, Caspa is and always, or Caspa was and, and always will be a long-term play as the ecosystem continues to grow and it continues to do things that no other proof of work network has ever done. And we're excited and here for it. If you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. Come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one.